Atlanta's a world-class city with state-of-the-art facilities like Turner Field, the home of the Braves, and the Georgia Dome, the home of the SEC football championship, the Atlanta Falcons, and this weekend, the SEC basketball tournament. It moves into the semifinal rounds today. Three of the four seeded teams well, have made it. And today, Randy two Johnson. teams will survive to play for the championship tomorrow. Hi, I'm Bob Kessling. Welcome to Jefferson Pilot Sports coverage of this SEC semifinal brackets today. Here's the pure leader brackets, how these teams got to this Saturday afternoon showdown. Three of the top four seeds survived. The only one to get knocked off yesterday, Tennessee lost to Mississippi State. The other seeded teams, Auburn, Kentucky, and Arkansas, all won yesterday. So the semifinal brackets look like this. Auburn and Kentucky play in our first game. Mississippi State goes up against Arkansas, and the winners from these two games will meet for the championship here tomorrow afternoon. First game, of course, matches the Auburn Tigers, high-flying team that won the SEC regular season championship against the Kentucky Wildcats, the tournament veterans. They have 21 tournament championships going for 22. Our first game should be a dandy as Auburn gets set to take on the Kentucky Wildcats. Tom Hammond and Larry Conley will have it for you when we come back to the Georgia Dome in just a moment. Brought to you by the new Regal GS by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. By Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications company of the SEC. By Pizza Hut. Try the big New Yorker pizza from Pizza Hut tonight. And by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide understands that every driver is different. So for insurance coverage and financial services that meet your needs, call a Nationwide Insurance agent today and get Nationwide on your side. The Georgia Dome in Atlanta packed today as the 1999 Southeastern Conference Tournament reaches the semifinal round. Today's first game matching the Kentucky Wildcats and the Auburn Tigers. Hello everyone, I'm Tom Hammond, looking forward to a match between the two highest rated teams in the SEC in what has been a topsy-turvy Southeastern Conference season. It was an unusual year in the SEC. Auburn finished in the top 10, Kentucky didn't. The Tigers will treasure the finest season in their hoops history, rising as high as number two in the nation. The catalyst for the success, Juco transfer Chris Porter, named SEC Player of the Year. The Tigers reached the semifinals with an easy win over arch rival Alabama yesterday afternoon. Reigning national and SEC tournament champion Kentucky finished the regular season ranked 14th, succeeding or failing with a play of its seniors. The Wildcats beat stubborn Ole Miss last night to reach today's semifinals. And so the Kentucky-Auburn showdown is set in the SEC tournament semifinals. Joined by Larry Conley, who has his semifinal coat on, you'll notice. <laughs> and Larry, we're uh, excited for this matchup. You know, last season, Wayne Turner of Kentucky was named the outstanding player in this SEC tournament. And judging by his performance, I'm okay. Judging by his performance from the uh, in the Ole Miss game last night, uh, he is back in top four. Yeah, he had a career game last night. Obviously, his best game of the four years he's been at the University of Kentucky. Kentucky. All year long, the coaching staff at Kentucky has been trying to find somebody who would step up and carry this club. Maybe that performance yesterday is the one guy to propel him into that role. Of course, Auburn has had a magical season, and Chris Porter has gotten all the accolades. Southeastern Conference Player of the Year. He is a fantastic talent. But at the point guard for Auburn, Doc Robinson may be the glue that keeps them together. Yeah, he really is. And he's equally as important as Chris Porter is. This guy has done everything for them. One of the best point guards, I think, not only in this league, but maybe in the country. Handles the ball, dished out seven assists in that big win against Alabama yesterday. You want to watch today the key matchups? I think it's Turner and Robinson. When Kentucky beat Auburn by 10 points in Lexington, Doc Robinson was ill with the flu, played a subpar game, had only three points. He's at full strength today. Kentucky and Auburn coming up. Back to the Georgia Dome in Atlanta for the first SEC semifinal game. Kentucky with a record of 23-8 and eight, and Auburn at 27-2. and two. The Tigers ranked fourth in the nation. Kentucky ranked 14th. Our Just for Feet starting lineups. 
first for the Wildcats, who are 11 and 0 unbeaten in the Georgia Dome. Scott Padgett, first team All SEC. Hashimu Evans broke out of a slump against Auburn earlier. Michael Bradley, best shooting percentage on the team, one of the best in the country. Wayne Turner had that career high 24 last night, and Desmond Allison, the freshman, who scored 10 points in the first half in the first meeting against Auburn. The Auburn Tigers who have won only one SEC Tournament Championship. Chris Porter, SEC Player of the Year. Bryant Smith, second team on SEC. Mamadou Njai, the seven-footer, a real force inside. Pullman, the good outside shooter. And Doc Robinson, all SEC point guard. 11.7 assists against Alabama yesterday. Let's go to Dave Baker now for a report. Tom, both coaches believe the difference makers in this game today could be two guys that didn't play in the earlier meeting up in Lexington. Doc Robinson did play, but he had the flu and a 102-degree temperature. He was held to a season-low 18 minutes. But on the Kentucky side of things, Jamal McGlure, who's playing his best basketball, also missed that contest. He was suspended because of a curfew violation. All right, thank you, Dave. So both teams at full strength for this semifinal showdown. Kentucky with a big lead in the series, as is the case with all the SEC schools. They have won 13 straight in SEC tournament play. Kentucky is 10 and 1 against Auburn. Kentucky 94 and 15 overall, 21 tournament championships. John Cockerty, David Day, and Tony Green to call today's game. Underway, and Kentucky has the opening tap. Auburn will open up. Looks like in a straight up man-to-man -man defense. Holman's going to watch Turner. Interesting match up there. Evans cutting to the basket. Couldn't get it down. Bradley with a follow. No good. Still a battle. Padgett wades in to get it. Turner. Padgett. Back to Evans. Padgett feeds inside to Bradley. Ball fake. And the first foul of the game. Great passing by Kentucky that time, Tom. Down on the inside, the interior pass was outstanding. I'm not sure why Turner passed up that shot as hot as he was yesterday. Why he didn't go ahead and let that one go. Bradley will get the uh, pass off, and oh, they're gonna lay, they're gonna say he was shooting now. Well, Brian Smith got him pretty good, and he'll step to the line. I don't know if he was in the act of shooting. It was like the, he had no way to get it up to the basket. This is the free throw. Bradley is not a good free throw shooter. As uh, well as he shoots from the floor, 68.1%, as you see, he is the complete opposite from the free throw line, under 50%, and he misses two. Njai clears the rebound. That will hurt Kentucky as they advance into the tournament. Bradley has learned, got to learn to shoot free throws, which means he may not be on the floor at the close of things because of that inability to hit. He does collar the rebound on that Auburn miss. Turner feeds to Bradley, lays it up and in. Great look inside. Boy, two possessions. Kentucky has looked very sharp handling the basketball. Wildcats get the first bucket. Allison guarding Doc Bryant. Interesting matchup right there. I think maybe Tubby Smith feels like he's got a better matchup with Allison defensively against Robinson. Al uh, Robin, Doc Robinson being guarded by the freshman, Duncan Allison. Scott Coleman from Njai for the reverse. Here comes that pressure from Auburn. Now, this is something. Now, Cliff Ellis is going to pull it back and not put the pressure on Kentucky. Interesting move there. Bradley, he's being guarded by Porter. Padgett lost it for a moment. Njai has him. Lob it for Bradley. That's a size advantage, and Njai with a help to block. Allison's follow won't go. Njai clears the rebound. Get easy ones like that. You've got to make them. Watch Doc Robinson. Robinson penetrates, throw it right to Padgett. Turner. Great start for Kentucky. They're handling the ball and they're getting the ball to the open man. Padgett looking comfortable today. 5-2 Wildcat lead. Coleman, Porter wants it on the low block. Smith. That's a good matchup of two athletes right there. Now they make a switch. Smith leaves it out to Injai. Bryant Smith. Turner has to try to save it and does off Porter. Brilliant play by Wayne Turner, hustling after the ball and then saving it off the leg of Chris Porter. Kentucky did a terrific job against Mississippi last night with 19 assists in their game. Here's another one to Scott Padgett as he nails the three. Kentucky very good at moving the basketball, one of the better passing teams in the SEC. A little pressure from Auburn, then they fall back into their half-court defense, which is a man-to-man. Coleman's -man. guarding Turner. 
Anderson, open three. What well, time they've got it rolling right now. Early on, the Wildcats looking very sharp. The worst three-pointing team in the S three-point shooting team in the SEC. And after a really dismal performance in their loss to Tennessee, Tubby Smith says, we're going to shoot more. It seemed to be odd at the time, but it's a formula that worked against Mississippi and so far today has paid dividends to the Wildcats. Watch Porter on this move on the inside. Player of the year in the Southeastern Conference. How tough is he? Look at this move across the basket, hanging in the air and drawing the foul. Looks like Bradley picked it up. Number four. Look at him. He had Padgett nailed down to the inside. You can't let Porter receive the basketball that deep, that close to the basket. So here is Chris Porter, averaging uh, 16 points, nine rebounds a game. He was named SEC Player of the Year. Comes off a 22.5 rebound performance against Alabama yesterday. Tom, I don't believe I've seen anybody in the SEC play with as much energy and as much explosiveness as he does. Or as many highlight reel uh, oh, moves. <laughs> those ducks, yeah. <laughs> Not since Dominique Wilkins can I remember an SEC player that has the acrobatic moves of Chris Porter. Robinson deflects the pass out of bounds. Ryan to Cliff Ellis' lap over there. It's been a long time since Cliff has played. I'm not sure he knows what to do with the ball. Cliff Ellis, the SEC Coach of the Year for what he's done to the Auburn Tigers, a sensational season. Evans, Padgett, right back to Bradley to lay it in. Great passing. Boy, do they look sharp. Finding the open man. Auburn looks like they're having difficulty covering their men. Kentucky by six. Porter at long range. Padgett with the defense on him. Here's Porter. Getting way up on that shot. I'll tell you what, if you're Bradley and you're 6'11", you can't stand there and try to take a charge against Porter. You've got to go up there and try to make it as tough on him as you can on that shot. Turner to the trailer. Allison passed up the shot. Padgett will take it for three. Oh, my goodness, are they hot. They've hit their last four in a row. And the Wildcats are up 13-6 on Auburn. You know, you look at a scouting report on them the last couple of games and say, look, we don't have to worry about their three-point shooting. What do they do? They come out and nail four of them. Well, Tubby Smith said, we're going to take more, not less. Quarter for three. And the two Wildcats battling each other for the rebound, and uh, one of them is going to be committed for, uh, to for an over-the-back foul. It's Padgett. Chris Porter way up for his fourth point of the first half. But Scott Padgett and the Wildcats have had the answer so far. That three made it 13-6, Kentucky. Kentucky leading 13 to 6. I want you to look at all the open spacing right in this area right here. Once Evans moves in this direction, watch the passing of Kentucky. The ball goes right across into the middle. Padgett gets it, gives it right back to Bradley, wide open, and he lays it in. Excellent passing by the Wildcats. And Kentucky has hit five of its first nine shots, 56%. There's three and three from the three-point arc. Padgett has two of those. And the Tigers 0 for 1. Overall, Auburn is 2 of 5, 40% shooting. Kentucky winning the rebounding edge 5 to 2 over the SEC's best rebounding team. Kentucky second, the first two rebounding teams in the conference. Injai partially blocked by McGlure, who's in the game. McGlure on the low block, puts it in. Over the uh, league's leading shot blocker. Got it up, got it in in a hurry. So McGlure comes in, he gets his 200th career block and his first basket of the game. Pretty good man-to-man -man defense. Porter wants to post up Padgett again. There he is, double down, help from McGlure. He gets the rebound on the Porter miss. I don't think this is what Auburn expected to get this kind of start. Padgett trying to post up on Smith. Can't get it to him. Here's Turner. Feet inside McGlure. Back to Turner. Evans guarded by Porter now. Puts it up no good. Rebounded by Njai. Good strong rebound that time by Njai. Porter did a nice defensive job on Evans. 
Fishback for three. He's been hot. That one no good. Fishback, a Kentucky native, into the game for Auburn. He had 15 points in 18 minutes against Bama. Evans on the other end to lay it in. Well, fellas have seen enough. He wants a 20. What a start for Kentucky. A little slap on the head to Hashimu Evans. Cliff Ellis with some instructions to his club. Jamal McClure off of the bench. The first thing he does is reject the NGI. Nice pick up by Padgett. Then on the other end, wants to push the basketball. Turner's got it. Kicks it right. Kicks it inside. And McClure finishes it off. Good job on both ends. Hashimu Evans finished it off with a little bit of a semi-dunk. And Cliff Ellis took a 20. Kentucky has hit six of its last seven shots on the way to building an 11-point lead. In the CUSA tournament in Birmingham, the hot team, the 49ers of Charlotte, they lead Louisville 31-26. Big win over Cincinnati yesterday. Get them into the championship game. This back for three. Kept alive by Smith for a moment, then Padgett grabs it. Turner, Evans, pull up. And Padgett sent flying with a push. It'll be an Auburn foul. Second on Bryant Smith. Tom, there are two things Kentucky's doing right now that's frustrating Auburn. One is, and Cliff Ellis realizes this, they are keeping them away from that offensive glass where they have been so dominant this year. They average 20 offensive rebounds a game. They're not allowing Auburn to get any second shots. And on defense, they have put tremendous pressure on the ball and keeping the ball away from Porter. Turner, that's his first shot. Rebounded by Fishback. McGadney and Chiliest into the game, too, for Auburn. Cliff Bell is trying to find some answers. He's gone to his bench quickly and gone deep. Smith on the wing, gives it to McGadney. They've gone three minutes without a point. Chilius, nowhere to go. And a three-second violation will turn it over. Tom, the defense is just outstanding for Kentucky. Good pressure on the ball. Good help when somebody penetrates. And when the ball goes deep into the post area, you'll see a lot of blue shirts converging on the ball. Maybe the best eight minutes of defense I've seen them play this year. Saw Tubby Smith. Interesting, while all the Kentucky fans were singing the blues after they lost to the Tennessee, uh, Smith is the most positive man in the state, saying it's tournament time, we'll be fine. Deflected, out of bounds, Auburn will get it back. Allison knocked it away. Tayshawn Prince for the Wildcats. Gives Ashimu Evans a rest. Saul Smith is in for Turner. And Jay Hurd enters the Auburn lineup. Both of these benches are very deep. You'll see Cliff Ellis and also Tubby Smith go deep down to their ninth or tenth guy. It doesn't really hurt them at all. Auburn's missed their last five, 22% shooting. Watch the half-court defense. Good pressure on the ball. If somebody gets beat, there's somebody on the offside to help. Doc Robinson, the only Auburn starter on the floor at the moment, as McGadney fires no good. Chilliest offensive board blocked on the attempted putback. Yeah, it'll go back to Auburn. Well, first time we've seen Auburn really get on the offensive glass, and it took Chilius coming off the bench to get in there and get it done. Jules Kamara into the game for Kentucky. The freshman from Dakar, Senegal, as is Mamadou Njai. Auburn sends in number 45. And Adrian Person is in for the Tigers. Chilius goes out. The only starter on the floor for... Uh, Auburn is uh, Doc Robinson, and Kentucky has uh, Desmond Allison, who's their only starter on the floor. The way today's game is played, Tom, it probably is a good idea to be able to go down and go to those ninth and tenth guys on the bench and be able to utilize them because of the way they play. I mean, very tough defense, full court, as you watch Doc Robinson make the move to the inside and draw the foul. He drew a lot of blue jerseys, too, didn't he? Didn't he? We're talking about the help defense. When somebody penetrates and gets inside Kentucky's defense, guys are coming over to help. That's the kind of half-court defense we saw from the championship team that Tubby Smith put together last year. McGlore was assessed the Kentucky foul. Third against the Wildcats. Auburn has committed two. 
That free throw, one of two by Robinson, the first Auburn points in nearly four minutes. Paul Smith had a little trouble with the catch of the pass. Needs some help now. I think he thinks he doesn't have to dribble. I think it was a fumble. Uh, he's going to hit. Looks like he turned around and asked John Glocker if, uh, if in fact he dribbled or not. McGadney blocks McGlure's shot off Jamal out of bounds to Auburn. Nice play by McGadney. That's the first Kentucky turnover of the game. Brian Hogan is in and Michael Bradley for Kentucky. McGadney with that block. Reggie Sharp is in for Auburn giving Doc Robinson his first rest. So not a single starter on the floor right now. Well, I take that back. Michael Bradley is there. Nice crowd here again this afternoon. That's a big crowd yesterday all day long. 22,000 in the afternoon, 25 at night. Jay Hurd blocked by Kamara, but Hurd got it back. Second try is there. Determined work by the freshman Jay Hurd. Auburn's got some outstanding freshmen. Jay Hurts, one of them. Mac McGadney, another. And maybe the best one that hasn't played most of the years, David Hamilton, the young man from California. He had a broken leg uh, in a pickup game on Christmas Eve. Just got into action against Alabama for the first time since then, yesterday. Jay Hurd commits the Auburn foul. His first will take a break with 11.28 left in the opening half. Kentucky continues to lead. They're up 17-9 on Auburn. From the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, the 1999 Southeastern Conference Basketball Tournament. We're in the semifinal round. Kentucky and Auburn squaring off for the first game. Wildcats leading 17-9. We'd like to advise you that uh, for a period of some 14 minutes, starting at 1.32 Eastern Time, our transmission from Atlanta may be affected by solar disturbances, sunspot activity, causing a momentary loss of signal in some markets across the southeast. Loss of signal beyond our control. We apologize for the inconvenience. Thank you for your patience. It's going to find some way to get control of that sun. 14-4 you know? scoring on the front court, but a dry spell both ways. And Kentucky turnover stepping on the baseline. Second Kentucky turnover. Tubby Smith not happy. His team's gone over three minutes without a field goal. Old for their last three, and that turnover. Kentucky with a little pressure of their own that time. Just token. Heard for three. Rebounded. One hand by McGadney. Shuffled his feet. Traveled. That's the third Auburn turnover. We invite you to stay tuned at halftime for Bell South's You Call the Play feature. Look at big plays from past SEC games. Bradley lost it, but it was kicked by an Auburn player right back to Wayne Turner. Yellow advised pass that time, inbound by Padgett. Nice pass inside to Bradley. Help defense comes, it doesn't matter. Bradley pops it in. Really no chance that for anybody to get inside like that. Bradley with a nice catch. Turner with a steal. Puts it up, and he's fouled by Sharp. I'll tell you what, you talked about at the top of the show that Wayne Turner was the MVP in this tournament last year. Looks like he's raising to the occasion again. Number five, Wayne Turner. I like the raising to the occasion, <laughs> not rising, raising to the occasion. Free throw good. He looked good on his free throws last night on his way to that career high 24 points against Ole Miss. He had four three point field goals in that game, had only five the entire season prior to that point. Two free throws looking good for Wayne Turner. Kentucky's lead, 21-9. Turner's got to his own defense. McGadney shoots back rim, but he got his own. Fish back for three. Short, rebounded by McGadney. Long rebounds, and now Auburn getting some of those offensive rebounds that they've been getting all year long. But they are 0 for 5 from three-point range. Kentucky goes to a 2-3. They'll try to match up out of this. Auburn playing without a single starter at the moment. McGadney. Another miss. This one taken by Tayshawn Prince. I'm not going to be wondering what Cliff Ellis is doing right now with all of his starters out in the lineup. Kishimu Evans. 
Now yeah, they're coming back. 23-9. Porter and company ready to check back in. Hey, maybe you want to give them a message? You guys, right. you guys want to play? You better get out there and play, or I'm going to let you sit over here with me. They start the game 3 of 17, 3 of 18 now. Bradley fouled by Persons. Always nice to have in that post position a little verbalizing going on with the physical play. Auburn Watch Browns inside as Bradley gets it, turns and tries to get his hey, man. <laughs> All right, so Auburn says enough of this. They come back for their starters Porter, Smith, Injai, Pullman, and Robinson. They trail 23 9. Let's see if their starters can do anything for Auburn. Look, Kentucky has really dominated this first half so far. Kentucky has its five starters out there as well. Allison for three. Oh. Long range three. Allison had his coming out party in the first game against Auburn. He hadn't played all that much. Had 10 points in the first half and earned a starting role. After that, which he has kept the entire way. Another miss. Turner, though, lost it. Tried to save it off Porter. And just laid it in the easy bucket. That was a gift. Turner losing his balance after taking the rebound and saving it right to Porter. Half-court trap by Auburn. And just saves it. Taps it to uh, Evans. Bradley with a little bit of attention to taking care of the ball. Here's Bradley against Injai, up and under. He'll shoot two. Pretty nice move there. Got the ball fake, made the left shoulder turn into the lane. Injai went with him, and then he ducked underneath of him. First foul on Mamadou Injai. Go back and look at this nice screen to freeze Allison, and he lets one go. That one came from about the uh, second level of the mezzanine here. <laughs> Allison has been a force in this his freshman season after he earned the starting role as Michael Bradley, who missed his earlier two free throws, gets a uh, rough-looking bounce, but he has seven points. I think sometimes Tubby Smith would like to see him get a little bit more aggressive. You know, and, and really covet the basketball. I think sometimes he just feels like if he doesn't really get aggressive enough and stick his nose in there. Second free throw way short. Kentucky hitting 56% of its shots, only 19% for Auburn. And here is uh, the Auburn foul on Coleman. Or was he out of bounds? Out of bounds, yeah. That'll be the fifth Auburn turnover. Watch here, Scott Pullman trying to make the move around. He just looks like he stepped on his foot. Troubles compounding for the Tigers. Only a 4 of 21 shooting, 19%. And just now turning it over. Allison, open look at the three. Rimmed out. Bradley, offensive board. Slapped away from him. Injai has it for Auburn. Long pass for Porter. Skip across court to Pullman. Now Auburn will get it in the hands of Doc Robinson and set it up. And a Kentucky foul call. It's on Turner, his first. Take a look at Doc Robinson right here. You see Wayne Turner reach out right there and block him as he starts to go in, and he'll get the foul. 7.52 left. The hot shooting Wildcats have the lead. It's 27-11, Kentucky. 27-11, Kentucky leads Auburn. The Wildcats with a number of strings on the line. They're 11-0 here in the Georgia Dome. They've won seven straight SEC tournament games. They've taken six of the last seven SEC tournament championships. In that string, the only time they didn't win, Mississippi State beat them in the finals, and they went on to win the national championship. 96. 52.6% shooting to only 19 for the Auburn Tigers. Kentucky stays in that 2-3 zone. Pretty big lineup out there right now with Allison playing that guard position out there. That's a walk. And another Auburn turnover. They have a half dozen. Auburn needs some defensive turnovers here and pressure against Kentucky. Kentucky's been able to handle it so far, but watching Auburn play the other day against uh, Alabama, I thought their defensive pressure was tremendous. 
And now they go to the zone. Two three set up now for the Tigers. Padgett for three. McGlord had it for a moment. Mamadou Injai grabbed it away. Pretty smart move by McGlore that time. He probably would have been called for a foul if he continued to maintain that position. Bob it into Porter. He's two of four shooting. The only Tiger shooting well. Coleman misses. No, he didn't. Not tapped. I think it rolled in on its own. Or did Smith tie it, tap it in? They gave it to Bryant Smith on the tap in. Okay. Because it would have been a three right. if, it, if it had gone because he was standing right in front of that Kentucky bench. Padgett in the middle of the defense. Allison back to Padgett. Had an open look, passed it up. And bodies collide. John Pocket got in the middle of all that, too. Padgett appears to be hurt. Robinson went to the court. Tom, let's go back and take a look at that shot by Scott Pullman down in the corner in front of the Kentucky bench. Now, watch it come off. Yeah, it was a good tap in. Brian Smith right there to get it. You know, you and I have talked a lot about this Auburn basketball team this year, but I think Brian Smith may be one of those players that may be one of the most unheralded guys in this league. Third foul that Smith has picked up, and he'll have to go to the bench. He's had a oh, Damian Fishback here. replaces Brian Smith, who picks up his third foul with 641 left in the opening half. Could be a key point in the game as Bryant Smith picks up his third. And the semifinal round at the SEC tournaments, and we're looking forward to the second game of the day as the Cinderella team of this tournament so far, Mississippi State, with its defeat of Tennessee, has earned a semifinal berth against the Arkansas Razorbacks, who just did outlast the Florida Gators around midnight last night in the uh, final game of the quarterfinal round. So coming up next, Mississippi State and Arkansas. Give Rick Stansbury a lot of credit, Tom. He's picked up two wins in this Southeastern Conference tournament. I think they've actually played themselves into the NCAA tournament with that big win yesterday over Tennessee. Chucky, uh, when they shoot the three-point shot, have not lost. And they're 4-7 today. Can't make free throws. Wildcats really have struggled from the free throw line this year. Padgett with the latest miss, and they're only three of seven for the game. Half court trap and back into that 2-3 again. See what Auburn does to handle it this time. Little perimeter action. Stolen by Padgett. Bad pass by Pullman. Saul Smith spotted in the corner. McGlure trying to position himself inside. Now Evans with a McGlure screen. Shoots the three but can't hit. Porter the rebound. Wide open look. Good screen by McGlure down on that baseline. Robinson for three. That's what they needed. They needed a lift from somebody on the outside. Doc Robinson delivers a tray. Auburn back within 11. One of nine three-point shooting by the Tigers. Smith for three. Can't answer for Kentucky and a rebounding hold on Auburn. Fishback. Or, or Injai. Injai it is, number two. Now Doc Robinson finally delivered a three for Auburn. Watch this one from long range as he gets it up over Desmond Allison. Doc Robinson, one of the best guards, not only in this league, but around this country. And an all-SEC performance year. Wayne Turner replaces Saul Smith in the Kentucky lineup. Solid game from Evans against the Rebels yesterday. Kentucky finally makes a free throw. Here's Adrian Person replacing Mamadou Injai with his two fouls. Shimo Evans shooting for a half dozen points if this one goes in. And he got the roll. And Evans will go to the bench as Tayshawn Prince enters the lineup. At the conclusion of the game, we'll be selecting a BP best player from each team. In addition to recognizing our two best players, BP and its dealers will contribute $2,000 to the Southeastern Conference to be distributed among the member institution scholarship funds under a conference-approved plan. Dougie comes out of the zone. Now they go man-to-man. -man. Who's got Porter? Well, they just switched off. We got Allison and McGlore. Shoots over McGlore. Air ball. Out of bounds, off person. It'll be Kentucky's basketball. Chris Porter really frustrated to this point, although he's having a decent first half, not the kind of half we're expected to see. 
Two of five shooting by Porter. Six points, two rebounds. Kentucky's going to stay in that, or I mean, Dahmer's going to stay in that zone. Kentucky's going to try to work the perimeter. It has success going inside. French looks inside for Padgett. Can't get it to him. Now Turner for three. He's reverted to form after last night. Porter clears the rebound. Well, the form never has been very pretty. Oh, was successful two. last night, though. Oh, for two today. Jay Hurd shows you how from three-point range. Hurd has five points off the Auburn bench. Tigers within nine. They're starting to battle back. You don't win the Southeastern Conference Championship without having a club that battles back. And Auburn's doing it right now. They got a lot of folks over here. Not far from uh, Auburn, Alabama to Atlanta. McGlure missed it right underneath. Easy shot, good look, couldn't get it down. Here's Robinson. Losing it, reclaiming it. Person for three. Porter tapped it. Try to call timeout as he sailed out of bounds. Couldn't do it. He stepped on the out-of-bounds line, says John Cockerty. Take a look at it again, the Porter maneuvering underneath, trying to get over and jump right over the Kentucky bench. Excellent call by Clockerty. He had his foot planted on the line when he set sail for the ball. So Clockerty right on the spot, even though Porter thought he made the timeout call and the good save. 4.09 left in the first half. Kentucky has led all the way. They're up 10 at the moment. They need to keep this pressure on Kentucky if they've got a chance to come back. They have lived and died with this pressure all year. They have lived more than they've died. <laughs> they've only lost twice. Kentucky's biggest lead was 17, so Auburn has been pawing its way back in it. Prince for three. Offensive rebound and stick back. Good, strong rebound that time by Scott Padgett. Padgett somebody somebody missed a blockout assignment. He was uh, wide open lane to the basket for the putback. Eight points. It's 31-19. Now Kentucky goes back to the zone. Cuddy Smith keeps switching defenses. Hurd misses the three. Slapped out of bounds. Last touch by Fishback, Kentucky's ball. Tom, you got to put bodies on big people. Watch Scott Padgett find the opening right here. Look at this. Goes right inside. Nobody blocked him out, and he had an easy lane to go in and kiss it off the glass. Timeout with 3.24 left opening half. Kentucky leading Auburn in the semifinals, 31-19. Leading Auburn 31 19 in the SEC tournament semifinals. And from Birmingham in the Conference USA tournament, Charlotte with a big lead over the Louisville Cardinals 43 to 28, playing in the second half. How about those 49ers, huh? Big win over Cincinnati yesterday, and looks like they're on their way to another one over Louisville today. Auburn continues to struggle with its shooting. They're 7 of 28, 25%. Kentucky 11 of 26, 42%. Auburn 2 of 12 from the three-point arc. They've turned it over seven times. Four Kentucky turnovers, rebounds all even. Kentucky's cooled off their shooting from that uh, onslaught that they had to begin the game. Auburn continues to try to use that half-court trap. They come out of this and do very well with it. Saul Smith and Wayne Turner, the two point guards, on the floor for Kentucky now. Shot clock at six. Bradley. Tapped dead by McGlure. Well, McGlure has played well in there. This is Tubby Smith's big team out there right now. He's got McGlure, he's got Bradley, he's got Tishon Prince on the inside. Kentucky uh, giving Auburn a taste of its own medicine with its offensive rebounding. 8 7. The rebound in the department as Chris Porter gets right to the rim to lay it in. Jay Hurd made a great pass that time right over Michael Bradley's outstretched hand. Tough to get that ball in there against that Kentucky zone, but Hurd did. Turner's pull up, back rim, rebounded by Fishback. McGlore deflects that one out of bounds. Kentucky sends in number 34, Scott Padgett for number 34. Go back and take a look at what Jamal McGlore is so effective at doing on the inside. Michael Bradley with the left hand, and McGlore almost palmed that one in there. Announcers for this game selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Porter lost it out of bounds. 
careless, unforced error by Auburn. Their eighth turnover. Professor Ellis right now wondering what he can do to get this turned around. Two minutes left in the first half. McGlure on the high post. Smith for three. Rebounded by Porter. Kentucky's gotten very cool now from beyond that three-point arc. Porter slapped away by Saul Smith. Kentucky 4 of 11 Auburn shooting from the three-point arc. Porter. Porter takes a seat replaced by Injai. Kentucky will zone this out of bounds. Force the ball to come along. Fish back, chases it down in backcourt. Two pretty quick guards out front and three stalwarts inside now as Paget anchors in there with Prince and McGlore. They want Njai, can't find him, good coverage. McGlore fell down, Njai made a quick move for the ball instead. Person shoots a three and misses. McGlore way up for the rebound, strong rebound. The ball McGlore's had a good first half, Tom. Four rebounds. Paget, Prince, Tayshawn Prince short, kicks over the backboard and out of bounds. Short armed it a little bit. You know, he got in there, got the open shot after he made the good ball fake, took the one step in, and maybe he's a little unsure of whether or not he wanted to use the glass. Auburn sends in number 50, Doc Robinson. Doc Robinson replaces number Reggie Sharp three, for Auburn. Reggie Sharp. 109 showing on the clock, first half. Kentucky has led the entire way. There has been one tie, 2-2. Two -two. Kentucky staying with this zone. They've had some success with it. Auburn has struggled trying to get the ball to the inside, and their three-point shooting has been abysmal. 50 seconds left in the half. Saul Smith commits the cardinal sin, fouling a three-point shooter. The dad is not happy. I bet that's a stare that he has watched since he's a year old, and he knows exactly what it means. Watch again. You'll see Saul Smith right here come across right on the arm of Jay Hurd. You know what? Line. It was Jay way Herter. back, too. I yeah. mean, that, that compounds the error by Saul Smith because he was way behind the three-point arc. And the last thing you want to do is foul him. If he makes it from there, have at it. But Hurd helped Kentucky by missing his first free throw. He does have five points off the Auburn bench. He'll have one more. 65% shooter on the regular season, Jay Hurd at the line. Saul Smith goes out as Allison returns. There's a look 44 as David Hamilton, the 6'9 freshman from Compton, California, we talked about earlier as Saul hears it from Dad. Hamilton, the young man who broke his right fibula on Christmas Eve, had surgery. Just got back into action against Alabama yesterday. Hurd misses two of three, 33-22 with 42 seconds left in the half. Deflected out of bounds. Kentucky will get it back. Kentucky's only hit two of their last 13 shots, and they've missed their last six from three-point range. Yeah, they've gone very, very cold. And they've had open looks, and it's, it's not like they've been challenged. They've really had open looks at the basket. Pageant for three. A seventh straight three-point miss for the Wildcats. Auburn can hold for the final shot. Tigers are going to go in at a halftime deficit to the Kentucky team that's come out here in the first half. First ten minutes look as sharp as they have looked all year. Sharp for three. Slapped out. Taken by Turner. Five seconds left. They've got time. Evans is fouled. That pretty well sums up the Auburn outlook on that last play. Saw Cliff Ellis put his hands over his head going, oh, no. Watch it again. Turner gives it up. Evans is here. I'm not sure what happened. He get pushed from behind. Hamilton committing the foul. There's the reaction of the SEC Coach of the Year. But Evans can't hit a free throw. Misses the first. Hey. 
Something Kentucky has struggled with all year. They finished ninth in the league in uh, free throw percentage, shooting 63%. It's not been a good year for Kentucky at the strike. Kentucky's uh, front court, though, has been good as Evans misses both. Kamara missed a tap, and the first half will come to an end. The Kentucky front court supplying 25 of their 33 points. Kentucky hits a cold spell toward the end of the half, but they still have the halftime lead, putting the clamps defensively on Auburn and leading 33-22. Bob Kessling to take you through halftime in just a moment. SEC Basketball is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide understands that every driver is different. So for insurance coverage and financial services that meet your needs, call a Nationwide Insurance agent today and get Nationwide on your side. By Century by Buick, a luxury car for everyone. By Amoco Ultimate, you expect more from a leader and you get it. And by Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications company of the SEC. Kentucky's biggest lead of the first half, 17 points. Auburn tried to mount a comeback as the Wildcats cooled off, but yet Kentucky still leads here at halftime by 11. In the first game up in Rupp Arena, where Kentucky won by 10, they held Auburn to 33% shooting, putting the clamps on them again today. To set up the second half, let's go back downstairs to Tom Hammond, Larry Conley. Thank you, Bob, and good job this week, by the way, and you bring up a great point. This game taking on a lot of similarities to that first meeting at Rupp Arena. Kentucky putting the defensive clamps on Auburn, holding them before shooting, and building a big early lead. And Tom, the defense, and we'll show you a little bit of the highlights of the first half because a lot of it was defensively oriented. We'll show you what Kentucky was able to do as we go inside, as Porter gets the ball down inside. Tough to make that pass over Bradley, and Porter is still able to get it up and get it down. But watch the defensive work that Kentucky put on Porter right here. Padgett working his way around the screen. When the ball goes in, they double down on him. Padgett's on the backside. Porter having to go out a little bit further than he wants to. Then as he turns, there's McGlore. Now he has to go to the other side. Good help defense that time. On the offensive end for Kentucky, obviously Scott Padgett, who was two of four from three-point range, shooting the ball a lot better today than he has been from that range recently. Good look, good finish. Michael Bradley running the floor, running the, as well as any center in the SEC. Good pass by Wayne Turner as he drops it down inside. Turner with four big assists in that first half. And now let's look at our Amico Ultimate Halftime stats. 33-22 is the score. You see the field goal percentage only 26% for Auburn. They have hit four of seven. Kentucky unable to capitalize on their free throws. Five of 11. Three-point shooting, Auburn just two of 14. They've committed eight turnovers to four for Kentucky. Kentucky has a one-rebound edge, and all even on the offensive boards at eight apiece assists. Look at the difference. Kentucky with a good passing, 10 assists to only three for the Auburn Tigers. The winner moves on to tomorrow's championship game at halftime. Kentucky up by 11, back with a second half in just a moment. SEC Basketball is being brought to you by Altel, Cellular, Paging, Long Distance, and more. By BP. At BP, everything we do is to keep you moving. By BMW. Visit your local BMW center for a test drive. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. By Purolator. For more than 75 years, Purolator has been the filtration industry leader. By Just for Feet, where the 13th pair is free. And by Jefferson Pilot Financial. Complete financial planning and life insurance. We're helping you write the story of your life. Second half about to unfold in the SEC semifinals with Kentucky leading Auburn 33-22. to Go online with the Southeastern Conference at secsports.com. This interactive site features up-to-date stats as well as cybercast coverage of conference events throughout the year. Tom Hammond, Larry Conley, Bob Kessling, Dave Baker, our producer Roger Roebuck, director Dave Burchett, our final half together for this season as the other group, Tim Brando and Joe Dean Jr. will take over with Scott Snyder and uh, Jimmy Moore behind the controls. Barry Booker, of course, has been with us all season. Another good season of SEC basketball. Our 11th together, Larry. And my uh, 12th. It might be the 12th. 12th. Yeah. Okay. And my uh, ending my 20th season of SEC basketball. Well, congratulations. I, I would have bought you dessert or something. <laughs> Just what I needed. Thank you. <laughs> 
It has been fun. It's been a good year. I think the league's going to do well in the NCAA tournament. But several teams are going to launch in there, and I think a lot of teams around the country are going to be surprised at how good this league really is. Kentucky opens up man-to-man -to, -man to start the second half. And Auburn immediately goes to Porter. And he's short on the shot, but he got his own rebound as Padgett mistimed his jump. So the halftime take feature piece we showed you, Padgett guarding Porter. And Bradley with a foul of Chris Porter. Number two on Michael Bradley. Well, they called it on Allison. I could have sworn I saw Bradley hack him on the arm. And Porter will go to the line. This could be a good start for uh, Cliff Ellis' club if Porter can get these two free throws. Get him down under double digits. There's the first. Yeah, consider the fact that he had eight points and five rebounds in the first half. And we still don't think that's good enough for him. <laughs> you know, he ought to be playing better than that. Well, he set a pretty high standard in his first season of college basketball after transferring from Chipola Junior College. This is the second one. Bradley the rebound. The margin 10. Turner right around Porter. Missed the shot as the help defense came from Njai. Padgett undercut as he takes it back up. Auburn foul is on number 50, Doc Robinson. Doc Robinson commits his first. Turner taking advantage of the open lane. Goes down the inside. Njai with good offside help there. And you can see Bradley battling. Kept it alive for Padgett. Actually, I, was it the injury that got him or was it Porter that undercut it? Doc Robinson. It was Doc Robinson. Reaches. Well, okay. I thought the injury might have gotten him as he went across. And Padgett misses another free throw. Kentucky's cold free throw shooting is a recipe for failure here. If you carry it out through tournament time all the way, you've got to hit your free throws. And Padgett misses two. They're five of 13. That's a good way to get yourself beat. Absolutely. Porter's pass stolen. Here's Turner. Three on two break. Allison puts it up and in. But that'll win games for you right there in transition. Wayne Turner delivering the pass. Desmond Allison running the floor. Eight points. He had ten in the earlier meeting with Auburn during the regular season. Kentucky in the man-to-man -man defense. Turner's got Robinson out front. Robinson spinning it on nice. him. And oh, how nice. How did he get his how did he get through all those Kentucky defenders? Just spinning, pivoting his way right to the hoop. Back down court, a whistle stopping the action. And a pushing foul against Kentucky. Wayne Turner called for a push of Chris Porter. Second foul on Wayne. Tubby Smith asking the same question. That was way away from the ball. That was about 40 feet behind the ball. Auburn with a chance to get it down to single digits. Watch Padgett down inside. Porter trying to establish that good post position in there. Padgett doing nice work defensively on him. Robinson bounces high and off. Rebounded by Evans. See Padgett blocked Porter out, would not allow him to get to that offensive glass. Wayne Turner. Wayne Turner has four points. Kentucky back up by 12. Most impressed with what Badge has been able to do today with Porter. Pad Turner with a steal for Robinson. Hits Padgett, leaves it for Bradley, and he travels. Oh, they had a beautiful play working, and Bradley took steps. Well, that's what happens when you don't have a guard involved. <laughs> Two big guys handling the ball going down the floor. Padgett made a nice bounce pass. Bradley should have just picked that one up and gone right to the rim with it. Half dozen turnovers now for the Cats. That negated the Turner's brilliant steal. He has three steals in the game. Kentucky's all-time leader. Bryant Smith, they want to go with it. Evans comes away. Four on two. pass. Hashimu Evans handling the middle that time and Turner filled the right lane. Kentucky getting transition baskets on Auburn now in the second half. They're ahead 14. Holman rebounded by Turner. Turner pass picked off by Smith. Robinson triggers it for Auburn. 
three-pointer. No good. Tap, no good. Robinson saving it, and the basket good by Smith. Frederick pays right there. I'm not sure what was going to happen at the end of it, but Auburn ends up with a basket. Evans wide open, three, short, up. Injai all alone for the rebound, and here's Porter with a run out. Injai pass too long. He was way behind the defense. He had the layup for the jam, but he couldn't catch the pass. Watch again, Kentucky handling this break very well. Wayne Turner catching the ball on the pass from Evans, avoiding the charge and pulling up and taking the jump shot. Kentucky got more, has gotten more transition baskets early on in this half than they did against Auburn in that first half. Jay Hurd is on, and so is Reggie Sharp for Auburn. Robinson goes out. Let's see, for Kentucky, I saw Smith has entered the game. Tayshawn Prince also. Turner's out of the game. Looks like Auburn's going to drop back into his own defense. Looks like a 2-3, maybe a... Yeah, 2-3 trap and a matchup out of it. Cliff Ellis takes his point guard out, and Tubby Smith gives his point guard a rest, too. Prince misses the three. Sharp leads the break. Better pick him up. Couldn't finish on the floor. Smith scrapping with Porter, and Porter wins. Did you see the aggressiveness of Porter? He would not give up on that ball. Even though Prince, even though Saul Smith had the better angle on it, Porter kept going after it. Heard for three. Bradley wades in and takes the rebound as bodies fly. Porter and Padgett tangled up under the Auburn basket. It's four on four. Lob it into Bradley. Allison. That's a goaltend. Credit the basket to Desmond Allison. Nope, it's a foul. Bobby Smith wanted a goaltend. Watch again. Look at this rebound down the inside by Bradley. Strong rebound. Now Padgett and Porter trying to get untangled down underneath the Auburn basket. Let's see if this is a goal team. Well, maybe not. Nope, I thought he got it going up. Injai with a nice block again. Did he draw the foul? Yes, he didn't foul, but uh, Jay Hurd did. Desmond Allison at the line, two shots. Eight points and three boards for Desmond today. Another missed Kentucky free throw. Watch again, you'll see Allison go up here. I thought that ball was going up. Yeah, that's a good call by the official. It's actually a no call. Just let it play. Tommy, it always perplexes me as to why teams don't shoot free throws well, particularly a club that works on as hard as Kentucky does. Allison misses two. Kentucky is 5 of 15, yet they lead 39-27. There's Allison with a foul. His second. Debbie Smith team could have had a, a big lead had they been able to hit free throws. As it is, they're up by 12 with 15.33 left. Well, the Kentucky defense has been uh, pretty effective today, holding Auburn to 23% shooting, 10 of 43. Uh, Kentucky not exactly lighting it up. This hasn't been a shooting clinic. 15 to 39, 38 percent as Chris Porter sits on the Auburn bench with a towel on his eye earlier. Kentucky uh, only 5 of 15 at the free throw line and 4 of 14 at the three-point arc. They've missed their last nine three-point attempts. Auburn has taken the rebounding lead 33 to 30. Well, that's the way it's been all afternoon for Auburn. Sharp threw the ball in. And Mamadou Injai wasn't even looking, and it sailed out of bounds, went all the way to the other side, and Kentucky gets it back. Didn't even contest the pass. 12 turnovers now by the Tigers, and only three assists. Here's Wayne Turner back in the game, playing with Saul Smith, as they did somewhat in the first half. Turner's having a good all-round floor game. Six points, five assists, three steals. Typical numbers for him, though. Turner driving by Inzai, pull up is short. Smith has it for Auburn. Kentucky good de defensive transition would not allow Auburn to get a cheaper. Pass goes inside to McGadney, partially blocked. Then McGlore had it stripped away. Auburn retained. From three-point range, Hurd 
third hits. J.R. can do that. He shoots about 42% from three-point range. You've got to keep your eye on him. Nine points off the Auburn bench. And now the Tigers within single digits. They trail by nine. Prince fouled. It's on Injai. Third foul against the Tigers this half. In Birmingham, Louisville cutting the margin somewhat, but still trailing Charlotte. In Charlotte at the ACC tournament, Duke up 10. Saul Smith, an open look for three. They've now missed 10 in a row from three-point range, and they've gone over three minutes without a point. Kentucky allowing Auburn to get back in this game. Auburn needs to take advantage of this. Smith driving on Padgett. Goes up. McGlure got a piece of it. Smith has it for Kentucky. Here's great. Turner. That was great help defense by Jamal McGlure. He left his man to go over and help. See how Auburn just backed off of Turner? They're, they're not respecting his shooting ability at all, even after that outing he had yesterday. McGlure catching right in front of the basket. Short on the jump hook. Padgett saved it, and McGlure scored. Give it to Padgett with a big assist on that one. Absolutely. The save underneath the basket and the bounce right back into McGlure's hands. Lead is 11. Kentucky goes back into that 2-3 zone. Skip pass. Heard for three. He's had the hot hand. That one won't go. Rebound. McGadney got it. Nice work by McGadney that time. We saw a little, a little bit more on that offensive glass where they've been so strong. That's their 16th offensive rebound. Kentucky back to a nine-point lead after the Auburn bucket. Away from the ball, push. It's on Hurd for a push of Scott Padgett. Watch the floor make a move against the engine down underneath there. Now watch Padgett slap the ball back inside. Good hustle by Padgett to get it back in there to Jamal McGlure. Jay Hurd, the most uh, reliable scorer off the bench for Auburn today, leaves the game after picking up his third foul. This back is in. Smith had the uh, interception for a moment, couldn't hold on, and it gave McGlure an easy bucket. He has eight points. I think McGlure just hangs around the basket. He's going to get a lot of points. I want to say a garbage player, he'll take it. And they're doing the dirty work. They all count the same the next morning. Three zone, very effective right now. Chris Porter wants to toss up near the rim. Robinson for three. Kicks high. McGadney tapped it to himself. Can he save it? No. Out of bounds. Kentucky's ball. <laughs> Brad Davis from the SEC office over there almost got crushed. Watch McGadney right here trying to go over there. Cliff's trying to reach out and trying to help him. He's going to go <laughs> slap it back to him. <laughs> It's pretty good. Evans. Gives to McGlure. No basket. Evans ran over the defender after he had passed the ball. Porter took the charge. Ashino Evans nullifies the Kentucky basket with his first five. Ah, I mean, he just slowed up a little bit, giving it off. I'm not sure Porter didn't flop a little bit on that one, too. It was a good pass by Evans. Porter is the uh, master of the flop, as we have told you over numerous games, even supplying sound effects to go with the uh, physical aspects. Take it back in that 2-3 zone. Auburn continues to look inside. They'd love to get the ball in there to Porter, but it's hard to get it in there. McGadney misses the three. Um, bodies flying on the rebound. Auburn is 3 of 19 from three-point range. That latest miss resulted in a gigantic collision under the basket. They'll sort it out. Will he take a timeout? 11-52 left in the game. Kentucky still holds the upper hand. 12 years old. <laughs> 43-32. The Tiger fans have had an uphill battle today. Trying to make it into the finals. They've only been into the SEC tournament finals twice. They won the championship in 1985. 
Saul Smith was called for a foul before we went to break, and now Auburn has turned it over for the 13th time. Chris Porter trying to make a good baseline move, stepped out of bounds, and Kentucky gets it back. They're turning up the pressure a little bit now on this possession. Evans with a pull-up shot, finds the bottom of the net. I thought he was going to short on that one a little bit. Got it up just barely over the front edge of that rim. Evans with eight. He scored uh, 20 against Auburn in the regular season meeting, snapping out of a long slump. He likes seeing these Tigers, doesn't he? Fish back for three. Nice, very pretty. They made Fish back about a 35% shooter from beyond that arc, and he just launched a good one to help Cliff Ellis' club. He's from Bowling Green, Kentucky. He went to uh, Greenwood High School, Kentucky Mr. Basketball. And he hits the three to pull Auburn within 10. And these clubs have used zone defenses exclusively almost in the second half. Evans bounces it out of bounds, untouched. <laughs> Auburn trying to mount the comeback. Tubby Smith now is going to change his defense. He's gone to a man-to-man. -man. <laughs> Auburn has never led in this game. <laughs> Fish back, lost it, able to get it back. Hatchet again's got responsibility for Porter inside. Allison's got Smith. Shot clock at eight. Robinson. Rebounded by Allison. Great work up by Turner defensively that time. Evans runs the floor, can't reverse it through. And a foul called, a push on Auburn. Kentucky trying for another transition Auburn basket that time. Auburn a little bit slow getting back. Talk about taking care of business. Kentucky with 12 assists. Auburn with only four. And obviously the plus three in favor of Kentucky is one of the reasons right now they've got that 10-point lead. And in the point guard matchup, Turner has five assists Auburn for two for Doc Robinson. That foul on Mac McGadney was his first. Goes to the bench along with Bryant Smith. Injai is back. Heard is back. Kentucky will put it in play. Turner for three. They ignored him and they paid. He had such a great three-point shooting day yesterday. How can you ignore him? You've got to go out and guard him. His first tray of this game, he has nine points. Kentucky stays with that man-to-man -man defense. Fish back with the earlier three tries again. Allison made a run at him, and it didn't matter. Fish back buries the three. Tom, that was a tough shot. I mean, really tough shot. Back to a 10-point lead. Allison cut off and double team. And he calls a 20-second timeout. 20 seconds. Next game of the semifinals features Rick Stansberry and Mississippi State against Nolan Richardson and the Arkansas Razorbacks. Mississippi State playing for the third time in three days. They upset the Eastern Division champ Tennessee Vols yesterday to make the semifinals. Arkansas with a tough one-point win over Florida last night, which lasted until after midnight. They're right back into action this afternoon. Final score from the Conference USA Tournament, Charlotte whips Louisville, 68 to 59. Uh, congratulations to the 49ers as we take a look. How about that? That's a pretty close score for Duke with North Carolina State up in Charlotte. <laughs> it's come to that, has it? We're just talking about margins now. Well, for Duke it is. Porter knocked it away from McGlore, and Auburn has the steal for the fifth time in the game. Robinson, that's a goal 10 on McGlore. Count the basket for Doc Robinson. Well, Auburn's starting to pick it up a little bit now. The steal on one end, and now the basket. They've cut this lead of Kentucky's to eight. Kentucky led by as many as 17 in the first half. Auburn has never led. They're within eight. Padgett, triple team to the low post. Dribbles out of trouble. Turner for three. That's way off an air ball. Porter, the run out. Here comes Auburn. 
And the fellas want more pressure. Allison, like a football receiver, breaks downfield and takes it like he was in high school. Kentucky's lead has shrunk to six. Evans with a strong move. Charging foul, no basket. Great move by Evans, a better defensive job. Oh, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. That wasn't even close. No, he was moving. The other angle shows it much better, but he was moving. Moved right into his path while he was in the air. Eight and a half minutes left. The Auburn comeback has carried them within six. They have the ball. Basket here to really get it close now. Walk. Yeah, it is. Porter traveled. 14 Auburn turnovers. He got a little anxious. He saw the basket. He thought he had a wide open layup and shuffled his feet. Padgett and Bradley, who have been so productive for Kentucky today, have not scored in the second half. Here's an Auburn backcourt foul, a push Auburn foul four, on Chris Porter. Porter. First, foul. first foul on Porter. Porter saying, I was the one that was grabbed. Team fouls even at six. Yeah, that was, pretty, that was a pretty cheap one, too. And Kentucky now begin to feel a little bit of pressure as Auburn has rallied to get it to six. We're back to their half-court game, and Auburn goes to a man-to-man. -man. Prince for three. Tapped by Paget once, no good. Slapped out of bounds. Now they're going to... Yeah, John Pockety overrules and says it was hit by Chris Porter, which I think is correct. Yeah, that is the correct call. No argument for Cliff Ellis. Here's the play, Prince with a miss, Padgett a tap, and then, well, I don't know, close call. We'll be back. Kentucky up by six, you see the time left, 7.56. You know, having the benefit of a replay is really helpful. Officials don't have that. But even that is not always helpful to us sitting here. You know, from that angle right there, it looks like Chris Porter slaps the ball out of bounds. Scott Padgett thought so. Now watch it from another angle. Now, right there, it looks like he does. But we watched it from several angles, and you know what? I'm still not sure. <laughs> Hard to tell. And the officials were divided. John Cockney had the same angle we did as we watched it live, and it looked like Porter had hit it. Patrick and Bradley firing blanks in this second half. One of the reasons that Kentucky has seen their lead shrink down to only six. Auburn in the midst of a 10-2 run. Big guys are handling it out front. <laughs> Kentucky sort of just standing around at the moment, not much going on. Well, I'm, I'm, somebody wants to take a shot. Shot clock is at six. Someone's going to have to. It's going to be Turner, apparently. Nope. Gives it up to Prince for three. Banked it in. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Hard to believe. They went for 33 seconds and ended up with that shot, and he knocked it off the glass. 51-42, seven minutes left. Robinson, open three. Got it. The answer. Well, Duck Robinson's really picked it up in the second half for these Tigers. Kentucky once again into the half-court game. They used a lot of shot clock that last possession. Allison looks for Bradley. Can't get it to him. Prince, a screen from McGlure. Looking for Turner. They get it to him. Ten on the shot clock. Well, Kentucky, Kentucky got conservative real quickly out of that timeout. Allison, nowhere to go, got the shot away and hit it at the buzzer. Do you believe those last two possessions? 33 seconds and 35 seconds, and they get two shots like that into the basket. Two desperation shots, and they both find the net. 
Washington. Porter, up high, no good, rebound, Prince. McGlure and Porter still on the end of the court, tangled up. Turner with a jump stop, nearly lost it. Now McGlure and Porter rejoin the action. Chris Porter only four of 10, 11 points today. Third possession in a row now in the half court game. The Kentucky's gotten real conservative. Bradley. Bradley with a leaner. Put the ball on the floor and scored the bucket. Wow. Kentucky back up by 10. Porter, baseline, help from Bradley. Foul. It could be McGlory, it could be Bradley. Let's see. It's on Bradley. Let's go back and take a look. Chris Porter releasing that basketball going up. And you can see right there, McGlory's going to try to get up. He said, nope, you stay here with me. I like it down here. We're going to let him play four on four. Looked like the WWF there, that it leg did, hole, leg It lock. did, didn't it? I'd give him a two for the rollover. I don't think they can give that kind of scoring in the WWF. There. I know, but uh, my college wrestling background, I was such a great wrestler. <laughs> I did wrestle a lot of guys, but I didn't get any points for it. <laughs> Shimu Evans and Scott Padgett return for Kentucky. Bryant Smith is back for Auburn. Free throw shooting, non-existent today. Auburn only 5 of 10. Kentucky worse, 5 of 15. Certainly the Achilles heel, I think, for this Kentucky team. If they can't make free throws, they're not going to be destined to go very far in the NCAA tournament. Porter misses two. On the rebound, a foul called. Nope. Violation, I think. Lane violation on McGlore. Well, that's what kills you. You get the rebound, you're ready to go the other way. It's a small little bit of mistakes that really cost you. Little things like that. You do seven or eight a game, it piles up. And Porter takes advantage by nailing the second free throw. Given a second chance, Porter got it. He has a dozen points. It's 55-46. Auburn back with a man-to-man -man defense. Kentucky wants to attack. Well, they have had three strange baskets in the last three times. Nice catch by Patrick. Threw it out of the double team. Back to Turner. Kentucky's made three in a row, three of the most bizarre ones you've seen in a while. Eight to shoot, seven as Turner let it go. Fight for the rebound, McGlure, put it home. He outbattled Njai on that one. Jamal McGlure putting in good minutes today off of that bench for Kentucky. Under suspension, didn't play in the first meeting against Auburn. He's been a real factor today. Kentucky back into that zone. Trying to keep that ball away from Njai and Porter inside. Chris Porter, bad looking shot, and then Bradley fouls Njai. Michael Bradley committing the foul, that'll be his third. Tom Perry similar to what happened in Lexington and Tubby Smith when he won the game against Auburn up there. Porter got restless, decided to go outside and start taking jump shots, and that's what happened right there. He was fortunate to have Njai in there to grab that rebound. Meanwhile, Tubby, you probably heard him there as he said, Mike, block out. Instead, it'll be Njai shooting one plus one. Kentucky has committed eight fouls. Auburn six. Njai makes the free throw. I know I've said this a number of times during the year, but I think Mamadou Njai probably is the most improved player in the Southeastern Conference from last year to this year. His game has dramatically improved, particularly on the offensive end. That one rolls off into the hands of Bradley. Just under four and a half minutes remaining. Ten-point game. Kentucky has been milking the shot clock every possession. And they've been able to do it four times in a row with a bucket at the end of it. Evans. Bounces off. Rebounded by Fishback. Fish back for three. Evans will be off with the rebound for uh, Kentucky. Wildcats get it back, still up by 10. I feel like Tubby might be one to work that shot clock a little bit now. Don't get too careful. 
Foul called on Auburn Smith. Auburn foul is four. 13, Brian Smith. That's his fourth foul. That's the seventh against Auburn, so one plus one for Kentucky. This could be really an Auburn's advantage to send Kentucky to the line the way they've been shooting today. Five of 15, and one of the chief culprits is that man, Shimo Evans. Does have eight points, three rebounds, and four assists in today's game. The senior from the Bronx, New York. Kentucky trying to reach another SEC championship game. They've won six of the last seven SEC championships. Seven straight in SEC tourney play, and they're 11-0 in the Georgia Dome. A lot of positive numbers for the Wildcats. They have absolutely owned this dome since this tournament came here. And we'll be back here again next year. Evans steps to the line and makes two. Tubby Smith applauds that. His team's up by 12. start driving the seniors Paget Turner and Evans come through again Wayne Turner breaks the press and gets the pass off to his Shimu Evans who finishes Evans gets the assist and goes in for the ultimate slam of the day and that's BMW's all of it drive of the week Now here's our all-tell play of the game. Little change, it's gonna be plays, if you will, please. All-tell plays of the game, and this is what we're gonna show you. Kentucky coming down, a crucial period here. Deshaun Prince with two seconds left on the shot clock, banking in a three. Now, right behind that one, another crucial basket that they need. What happens? Watch here, Desmond Allison comes down the inside, loses it, gets it back. Shot clock's at zero when that one goes through. And then, of course, Jamal McGlure down the inside with Turner misses this one, goes back up, grabs it, and lays it back in. Three crucial baskets when Auburn had made a serious run at Kentucky. Auburn continues to struggle with her shooting, 29% shooting. Kentucky at 40%. Kentucky only 7 of 17 at the free throw line. Auburn is 7 of 13. Each team with six three-point field goals. There's another three-point attempt. Fishback can't hit it. McGlure with a strong rebound. McGlure has been uh, big today. Eight rebounds for him. Played very well off the bench. Ten points, too. Kentucky's now going to sit on this lead. They're going to force Auburn to come out and play defense and foul them. Now Kentucky does have to make their free throws. Turner penetrates. Back to Padgett for three. Oh, that's big. That's really big. It was a long 3-2. He was a good two feet behind the arc. It's one of those things, Tommy Smith's going, no, 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 and then yes, yes, yes. Auburn needs a bucket. Brian Smith for three. Tapped out of bounds by Injai. Tommy has been that kind of day for Cliff Ellis and the Auburn Tigers. Every time they got ready to make a serious run, particularly in this second half, something would go haywire or Kentucky would pull something out of the hat. Doc Robinson was all over the arms of McGlure, probably trying to foul him. Couldn't get the whistle. <laughs> That's what kind of day it's been. When even when you want to commit a foul, you can't get one call. Again, working on the shot clock, which shows 10 seconds. Turner against Robinson. The pull up will send him to the line for two. I tell you, when they clear out like that, and Turner's got that maneuverability in the area right around the free throw lane, up from about eight feet out, he is really tough at maneuvering with that basketball. Doc Robinson to the disadvantage, no help coming. Second foul on Doc. Clock shows two minutes, two seconds in this semifinal game. The winner advances to tomorrow's championship contest. Turner's had an excellent all-round game. Offense, defense. Scott Coleman, Jay Hurd, a couple of sharpshooters enter the game for Auburn. Good strategy by Cliff Ellis. He needs threes, and he's got two of his better shooters in there. 
Turner hitting his key free throws here. He has 11 points and seven assists, three steals. He's had an excellent game. We've seen it all season. When the seniors play, Kentucky usually wins. Kentucky's now made four free throws in a row. Evans and Turner with back-to-back -back twos. Robinson dribbling himself free. Misses. Put back by Hurd. Hurd slams in the rebound. 64-49. Kentucky really has had very little trouble with the Auburn pressure defense today. And now Auburn has to foul. Auburn's got so many guys that can fly above that rim, and this is just one of them. You see the missed shot right here by Doc Robinson. Watch Jay Hurd come from the left side and jam it down. Good-looking freshman, Jay Hurd, out of Oxford, Alabama. Evans at the line, one and one. Even Evans is hitting the free throws now. Five in a row. Ten points, eight rebounds for Evans. Four offensive rebounds as the Auburn bench with some anxiety. And Tubby Smith still coaching over there in front of the Kentucky bench. Evans misses the second. Porter has the rebound. Evans knocked down. Jay Hurd going for the ball. It'll be ruled out of bounds. Auburn's basketball, no foul called. And I'll tell you what, we had why pretty, not? Yeah, we had a pretty good angle on that. I thought he got him too. Look at that. Ran right over him. Coleman fakes the three, steps inside the arc and hits. That's going to count. count. And a foul oh, underneath as Porter once again finds himself on the court. This time it's Padgett that's there with him. And Scott is not up very quickly, but holding his throat. Might have got an elbow on the throat, and that does hurt. Scott Pullman with a nice fake. It's a deuce right there. As you see the ball go into the bottom of the net, Auburn picks up two, and there's the reason Padgett went down. Simply because as he turned around, Porter caught him right above the Adams apple. Porter called for the foul. Padgett looks a little worse for wear. Scott with 11 points and six rebounds, and the Kentucky seniors again leading the way for the Wildcats. Jamal McGlore, though, off the Kentucky bench with a huge game. Ten points and eight rebounds as Padgett hits. And Doc Robinson, 11 points, two assists. The only Auburn player that really has shot well today. Four of eight. Padgett hits the free throw. Seven of eight now Kentucky has made in free throws when they really needed them. Auburn with just over a minute left facing possible four season lows as Hurd hits the three. Long range three. And Auburn takes the timeout at 20. 20 Coming up next, Mississippi State will take on Arkansas. Nolan Richardson and the Hogs against the uh, Cinderella Bulldogs of State. That's coming up next, Tim Brando and Jodine Jr. standing by. Of course, the championship game tomorrow will be on CBS. Vern Lundquist is here with uh, Al McGuire. Barry Booker is also, I think, going to be working. You spent a little time with Al McGuire, didn't you, doing some games? Spent a lot of time with him when he worked at NBC. And in fact, we did the Olympic basketball from Seoul, South Korea. We spent a month together. One of the true characters I've ever met. I, I, I guess you can attest to that. The genuine article. There's only one. Had a big hug for me when I saw him today. Evans is fouled. Auburn foul. The number 50, Doc Robinson. That's his third foul. Doc Robinson commits his third. It comes with a minute 13 left. Question now becomes, is it looks like Kentucky will hold on to win, Larry. It's only 13, so nothing guaranteed here. But should Auburn lose? Um... Will they be a number one seed in the NCAA, or will they fall to a number two? Well, that's a great question, because uh, usually when you see a club like Auburn that's a number one seed, they play their way into the finals of their uh, respective uh, tournaments in their conference. Auburn losing this game today, if in fact it does hold up for Kentucky, might jeopardize their number one seeding. Kevin Smith complaining the shot clock did not start. Or I guess the game clock didn't even give the shot clock. It's the game clock that was Probably a lot of it has to do with the other uh, teams around the country, too. You know, Michigan right. State right now having an opportunity to win the Big Ten tournament title. And, of course, uh, Connecticut playing today to see if they have a chance to win theirs. 
Auburn, if uh, they do lose, will have three losses, and two of them will be to Kentucky, and Auburn fans must wonder. Here we have uh, the best team in our history, a brilliant team, but what do you have to do to beat Kentucky? They did tick two seconds off the clock. I'll tell you something else it does, too. What does it do to Kentucky? I mean, where I thought maybe they were lingering around that number four seeding spot, they may move up a little now. Robinson for three. Game not over yet. Cliff Ellis wants a timeout. He can't get it. And a backcourt Auburn foul. Scott Pullman, I believe. Auburn foul. Auburn's beginning to launch threes. They're beginning to make some of them. Watch right here. Doc Robinson is a long range. This is about 28 feet out. Something they could have used earlier. Tubby Smith now conferring with his assistants there. George Felton on his left. Should Kentucky regain its momentum and win the SEC tournament championship, they may well be a two seed. Welcome to some of you just joining us for the Mississippi State Arkansas game. Tom Hammond, Larry Conley, Bob Kessling, Dave Baker. First semifinal of the SEC tournament, Kentucky and Auburn. Kentucky has led the entire way. There was one tie at 2-2, and since then it's been Kentucky. Their biggest margin was 17 points in the first half. They have held Auburn to under 30% shooting for the game. Tigers did make a little run, got within six in the second half, but since then, Kentucky has blown it back out, and now with 58.5 seconds left, it's Kentucky by 12. Turner has hit all six of his free throws today. McGlure with a block of Doc Robinson. Auburn got it back, Person for three. Holman the rebound. Holman's shot, can't find the net. Padgett has the rebound for the Cats. I think they can start to celebrate. They're going to be back in the finals again. And their uh, Georgia Dome streak will run to 12 and 0. And they would have won eight straight SEC tournament games. Donna Smith. <laughs> Directing a little traffic. I think she senses victory as well. Turner gets it to Allison and puts it out. <laughs> Pulled the rim down, which knocked the ball away, and that'll be Auburn's basketball. Embarrassing. Desmond Allison right there had an easy basket. All he had to do was just lay it in. Couldn't get up high enough. Pulled the rim down, and it flopped the ball out of there. Robinson for three. Long rebound to McGlure. Just 15 seconds left now, and uh, the Kentucky faithful rise to their feet. The Wildcats once again have a shot at the SEC Tournament Championship, looking for their 22nd SEC Tourney title. And that's it. Tubby Smith and Cliff Ellis with words at center court, words of condolence and congratulations. Kentucky's D. It's been such a potent weapon for the Wildcats this season. Today it holds Auburn to 30% shooting. And the Wildcats never trail in the game. The final score, 69-57. A balanced scoring effort for Tubby Smith and the Wildcats. And the D told the tale. Kentucky's in the finals. Back after this from your local SEC station. One spot in the tournament championship game is filled. The Kentucky Wildcats make it to the tournament title game for the 30th time as today the Wildcats beat the Auburn Tigers 69-57. A terrific defensive effort by Kentucky. Bob Kessling back in between games here at the SEC tournament. Joined by the coach of the Wildcats, Tubby Smith. What a defensive effort by your team today, Tubby. Unbelievable. I thought our guys really raised their level of intensity at the defensive end. You know, and we had to because Chris Porter, is a, he's a load by himself. But I can't say enough about our guys, especially Jamal, Wayne, Shimu, and, um, you know, Scott. Our seniors are really doing a great job of showing a lot of leadership and a lot of character. When they show leadership, you win, don't we they? We do. And it's, um, you know, when you can shut down a team as explosive as Auburn is, that means we and, and great defense wins championships, and we our players know that. Did you do anything different with Porter today? I mean, was he a point of emphasis? Well, of course, and I thought Scott Padgett did an excellent job on him, made him work to get his shots, uh, you know, made him take some tough shots over over uh, pressure, 
and, and limited his second opportunities, although he, you know, you're not going to stop him, just try to contain him and control him. In the first half, executed very well, took good shots. We did. And, and then we had some opportunities where we still were getting open shots, but we just couldn't hit them. We need to go inside because, you know, Cliff Ellis, he's known for mixing and changing his defenses, triangling two, dominant one, yeah. boxing ones. And we had some good open looks, but they didn't, just couldn't drop them. Wayne was four for five yesterday from three, but he couldn't get them to drop today, although he hit one big one today. The uh, light went on today for this team in tournament action. Well, they, I think they get geared up and get fired up when they see the lights. <laughs> Tubby, congratulations. Huge win for your team. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, Bob. Tubby Smith of the Kentucky Wildcats looks good. And Dave Baker's got some of the Wildcats with him right now. Thanks, Bob. Wayne Turner yesterday, Saul Smith said, like it or not, this is the Wayne Turner Invitational. 13.7 assists today for you. Well, I just, you know, they was making fun of me the whole uh, way down here, and they was, you know, saying it was, you know, my invitational because last year um, I played really well and got the MVP. But um, what I told them guys is that, you know, I want to win the tournament. Um, you know, because I feel like, you know, we're still a um, dominant team in this league, and we got some good players on our team, and we're really confident, and this is really where we come together. And um, in order for us to do that, my play has to be well, and, and everybody on the team play has to be well. And... You got the break going early and you got out to a big lead. Yeah, we got out and ran the floor really well. We got some easy layups and we rebounded. We took Chris Porter out of his game. Um, didn't let him, you know, get off to a good shot and let him um, get any open dunks to get the crowd into the game and get his teammates into the game. And I thought we did a good job overall defensively. Absolutely. Part of that reason was Jamal McGlure. Jamal, you were on that suspension. You missed the first Auburn game. You come in today, 10 points and nine boards. You got to be happy with your performance. Uh, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not complacent. I always feel I could work hard and, and do better when I'm playing. I think the team did a great job tonight. We played good defense and we executed on offense, and that was a key to winning. I'm proud of this team, and I'm ready to look on to uh, playing the winner of this game here. You talk about that defense. It's got to be effort when you hold a team like Auburn to that low a point total. Uh, we did a good job. Uh, I always said we had the potential to be a great team, and now we're showing sign, signs towards being a great team by executing on defense for long periods of time and just playing with a lot more heart. Jamal and Wayne, congratulations to the both of you. Second ago, Kareem Reed came by and said, hey, we'll see you tomorrow in the finals, and Wayne said, hey, you got to win this one first, Bob. Back to you. And they did exactly that as Kentucky moves down to 24-8 and eight on the season, Auburn 27-3, and three, two of those losses to Kentucky. We're getting set for our next game when we come back in a moment.